Hey there, welcome back, Shubham this side. Now let's try to work on an assignment. Remember, this is an assignment and not a full-fledged project. That means I'm giving you all the information or you can say a problem statement and you need to design a website according to it. Not exactly a proper fully functional website, but just to deliver all the problem statement or the requirement that I'm going to mention. So you just need to clone this page. It's shopping cart dash ul.netlify.app. And there are a few things that you need to use. You need to use react router to have some sort of multiple pages. You need to have a custom hook to update your title. If you observe, yep. You also need to have a proper structuring for your entire website. That means your component, your pages, then your CSS, everything should be done properly. And then you need to deploy it either on your Netlify or your Vercel. Also one thing you need to utilize your Git and GitHub skill for the deployment. You can take this entire thing as a problem statement. So basically there are four point react router, custom hook, structuring, deployment. So you need to cover all four of them to deliver this assignment. Now one thing we did all these topic already. We created a project already, then why again? Well, I'm giving you this again because I want you to do this from basics on your own without my help. Yep, there is a solution with the current source code as well. You can look at it, but my recommendation is try to do it on your own. If you think you are not able to do, then watch the entire solution lecture. Otherwise, my recommendation is try to do it on your own. Because during your freelancing journey or maybe internship or job journey, you will require to do certain small type of assignment for first round, maybe for second round. And you can take this as a small part of it. So you will get an idea how to design all of this, how to do this quickly and how to build a habit about it. This is properly a simple project, just two page application and you don't need to add any type of functionality. These buttons are not working. You just need to cover the four point react router, custom hook, structuring and deployment. That's it. And you can access all the images from the repository. So that's all. And I see you guys in the next one where we build this out. Hey there, welcome back. Shubham this side. Now let us start our journey with the current project. Here I created a shopmate folder or I should say shopmate project inside my projects folder and I removed all the unwanted stuff. I created a asset folder, added my logo and also I've added all type of CSS that we are going to require inside our app and index.css. That is done. I also updated my favicons and uh, added few images related to our shopping cart that we are going to require uh, something like these. Yep, they are all in a proper ratio. So I'm going to utilize that. So that's the base setup. And now let's focus on our requirement. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create pages. That means there is a home page, then there is a card page. Uh, these are the two pages that I'm going to deal with. And then there will be component like this is going to be our header component. And then this is going to be our card component for product card. And this is for cart card. So yeah, we need to work on that. Let me get here, um, get inside my source folder, have my first folder, which is pages, and then have my second folder, which is going to be components. That is done. Let me have my home.js. Then I'm going to have my card.js and then remember I'm going to have my index.js now let me give them a basic setup let me save this is done our page work is done then I need to focus on my components so let me get here inside my component. I am going to create my header.js. Then I am going to create another one, which is my car, which is my 
card card dot js then i am going to have my product card looks awesome let me just have the base structure here as well let me close all of them and i'm going to have my index.js great and all i have to do is just export them this is done the other thing okay let me add some space this is done the other thing we need to focus on is we are going to have a hook because that's literally the problem statement so either we can follow a sequence build the stuff and then do all of this or we know we are going to have this and we have all the information so let's create a hooks folder inside this i am going to add use title.js and let me do refc and yep we are not going to do right now anything we are just going to have this created that's it and then there will be routes because we need to use react router so let's have our routes folder inside this i am going to have my all routes dot js let me have my base structure ready and here things will be different that we will be talking about in few minutes yeah so that's the base folder structure now the next thing that we can focus on is dividing the css into multiple part for example currently i have all of this so this is for my header i can use this uh, and then this products will be used on home page to have access to all these products together but then there is product card that we can divide uh, here and later on we are going to have card page this is for card page actually if i jump here this is for card page and here this is for card so what we can do is we can divide them so let me have this a new file i'm going to first have my header.css then i'm going to create another one which is going to be my product card dot css then i'm going to have my card card dot css and what i should do is i should have all of them divided so this is for my header then this will be products and then product card so i need to focus on product card basically take it add it here save then i have this for card page and then card card yep so let's take the card and paste it here so i've divided for component rest i'm going to keep them here only so that is going to be for my products page and this is going to be for my card page that's it if you think this is too much like there is too much content for css then divide them in four pages as well but these are just three only so i'm going to keep them as it is that's it the base structure is ready now we need to work on them quickly so i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us move forward with our header section or i should say component let me get here the first thing is import my css because now i have it so all i have to do is uh, just import it from our current directory only header.css that's it the other thing i need to do i need to have a header part so let me have it here let me have my header yep inside this i'm going to have everything so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to have link to the image as well as the span tag carrying the name and then i am going to have nav to handle both of them and then i am going to have a link for my cart page this is just manual coded or i should say hand coded number so let me get here add link and that will be from our react router dom 
and now we are just uh, directly working with link no a tags go with the import then i will have link as well as nav link the other thing i'm going to do is and i'm going to import this from react router dom that's done and get here now i just need to use my link inside this i am going to have my image that will require the import of logo okay and then i'm going to have my span tag that is going to say shopping cart awesome uh, let me import my image let's get here go with my import it will be logo that will be from my assets slash logo.png and let me add it here and let me give it a name shopmate logo this is done now here i need to provide the path it should be two but the problem is we haven't created the router so after working with header we need to create all our routers after two what we are going to do we are going to have a class name that is going to say logo this is going to be the link path then i am going to have my nav inside this i just need to have my class name that is going to be navigation and since we have our nav link now i don't need to focus on anything else i can directly go with my nav link and add all our menu item uh, let's say home and then the other one is going to be my cart awesome let provide a two and this is going to be home so it will be slash and i just need to provide a class name that is going to be my link something similar i need to do with my cart page and this time it is going to be cart and same will be followed with class name then i just need to create another link that will take me to cart page okay let's do that i am going to have a link and here i need to just add the span that is going to term as cart 2 now this is going to take me to cart page so let's say cart and i am going to have class name which is going to say items awesome let me save and we are going to get lot of errors let me get here get here uh, refresh things are working fine but it is not going to have any type of display why we haven't added this header anywhere remember this small point okay that's done now if i jump onto our page refresh you won't see any type of difference why because we just created a component we haven't included it anywhere remember we are loading index.js and app.js that's it so we need to load it somewhere and before doing all of this to use react router dom we need to install it right stop my server and what i need to do install our react router dom so let me stop the server and then simply add the code npm install react router dom at 6 that's done uh, let me restart my server now uh, minimize this it is going to reload my server yep that's it uh, till the time it's reloading let me get into my index.js and here i need to import it let's say import what i need to import well my browser router so i'm going to say browser router as router that will be from my react router dom i'm also getting the suggestions now okay let me copy this one and here let me add it this is done let me save now we have the power for react router and now we can work on our routes so i'm going to get into my routes and i'm going to quickly create two pages so the first thing i need to do is import everything so there will be import for my routes let's say routes route from 
react router dom the other thing is we just have two pages so let me quickly import them it will be about my home and then my cart and that will be from pages so i can just directly have pages awesome now inside this i'm going to just create fragments so i'm going to have something like this and here i am going to cover everything with my routes so i'm going to have my routes here and just add two individual route which is going to be this should be self closing remove this one and here i just need to provide my path which is slash for my home then provide the element which is going to be the home uh, let's say home component and i just need to copy this one add this here and this is going to be cart and this is going to be cart component remember everything else will be inside this and this so these are the two components that i require save this is great now remember we haven't included our route as well so let's go to our app.js now because both of them is ready that is my routes and my header let me remove this h1 and i first need to import them so i'm going to have my import here the first thing i need to import is my header that will be from uh, my components and that's it and the other thing i need to import is my routes so let's say all uh, routes that will be from route folder and then all route pages yeah this is great now i just need to add it here so that will be header and then my all route looks good to me we can also remove this but then we need to add some fragment we are not utilizing this class to be honest so if we want we can remove this let me save get back here you can see this is the current uh, structure now this page is for card this page is for home now if you see we have some issue you can see this is permanent and if you remember we discussed about this earlier as well so if you get into your header.js for this one we need to add end get here you can see it's working fine awesome so our header is done our route is done these two are perfect now let me quickly work on the individual pages so here is our first page that is going to be our home so things should be easy let's see uh, let let me remove this and create a main so i can have everything inside this so what we need is on our home page i need a section that is going to uh, create these product card so i'm going to call this section as products and each one of them will be individual product card so that means we need to create a fake array and then map each element according to it so let's do that let's say i have a section i'm going to call it as products and inside this i need to loop over and create our product card so either i can design one card and then move towards our product card do something like this or i can just import product card directly and work on it let let me give you an idea let's say i can import my product card here that will be from my components that's it and let me add my product card here that's it now let's work on product card and create a demo product uh, currently we don't have anything we just have message about product card because we are showing this if i open my product card we need to design stuff so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to have a div here since this is a element basically a card and i'm going to provide a class name here let's call this as product card so it's easy to remember and then this card is going to have a image uh, then it is going to have a name and then a div that is going to have p tag to demonstrate this price and a button to demonstrate this add to card let's do that i'm going to have my image i'm not going to add it right now let's wait for everything else so i'm going to have a p tag going to give it a class as name and 
here I'm going to have a product name basically. Then I'm going to have another div and give it a class name as action. Inside this, I'm going to have my price. And the other thing is I'm going to have button here. If we want to do something, we can add functionality to um, maybe just have a console log for our on click event. Now I'm going to say add to card for this. This is fine. So what we want to do is we are going to have a product list. We map over them, send individual product information here in a loop, get here, access these information and then give these information for image, for uh, name and pricing. And that's all. So that's the whole requirement. So let's do that now with both of them together. And remember about the image we are going to use from assets inside public folder. So that means these are the image that we can directly access. So I can just go to my website domain slash assets slash images and then the image point. So if I need to give you a demo, if I get here, for example, this is my local host. If I go with slash, then I can go with my assets, then I can go with my images and then i can just say 1001.png so this is going to be my image path similarly i have other images and i can access them inside my assets folder since this is public so we can access it directly otherwise these images cannot be accessed we are going to use them in the form of some variable remember this point yep so that's the first task now let me have proper space what i'm going to do is i am going to create a product variable so i can loop over everything so now let me add my product either i can create it manually but i have already done that so i can give you an idea so this is the products uh, it's a basically a variable or i should say an array and here i have six object that means my six product um, each one of them is going to have a unique ID, name, price and image. Remember I have provided the public path that means these are in public folder uh, so it can be accessed directly through our domain name slash assets, images and the image name. That's it. That's the easiest way. I don't want to create a JSON server and do all this stuff because we got the idea how to use JSON. So this is a quick demo. Uh, how we need to have our product whenever we are trying to practice. So that's it. We have our products ready. Remember one important point. This is JavaScript, not JSON. We have created a JavaScript array and this is object. This is key and this is value pair. Remember this point. Okay, that's run. So now I have our products. I can utilize my well map and everything else so i can have my products dot map and then i can provide all type of information and do all type of stuff so inside this i'm going to have my product and here what i'm going to do i am going to call my product card and i'm going to provide a prop which is product and this is going to be product awesome now we can do one thing either we can provide ID here we can fetch the ID name and images individually or I'm just directly going to provide product here get here access the product prop directly here so let's say product and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to destructure it so I can have const since this is going to be an object remember here we are passing individual object this first then second then third and keep on following so i'm going to have individual object here uh, so inside this i'm going to have id name my price and my image so that is going to be my product yep i've really structured it also 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 i need to provide a key here so let's say key this is going to be product dot id awesome get here get here access to name great i can just go with my name uh, access to price awesome let me go with my price 
access to image awesome let me go with my image also i have access to name so i can just provide the alt tag as my product name only i don't require id so i can remove it let me say get back here okay now why you think we have this problem just try to pause or i think i should continue this in the next one where let's see what is the small mistake that we did so thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one So have you got the problem? Well, we haven't included the CSS. <laughs> yeah, that's simple. So let me get here. All I have to do is just go with my import and here I just need to include my product card.css. That's it. Let me save, get back here and now you can compare with the demo. So we are missing the currency symbol. Let me get here and let me add it here this is the currency symbol not the javascript symbol get here awesome these two are working fine now we need to focus on the card page and that should be simple all we need to do is get here on to the card page and something similar will be happening here we need to create a fake list of product that we need to show uh, in our case there will be two product we need to create a card card so let's do that first i'm simply going to import the card here let's say card card from my component that's it now i'm going to have a list of products that i want to show uh, it's just a fake list uh, that we just used earlier as well i just took two product that's it now i just need to design some stuff so all I have to do is get here, get into main and inside main, I'm going to have a section and let's give it a class name, which is going to be cart. And inside this, I am going to have my H1 tag and then the card. So the H1 tag is going to just say my card items. You can manually hand code it or we have this so we can use its length so i can just have something like products dot length let me save and then i am going to have my card let me save and currently this is empty uh, the other thing is I need to loop over to my products and for each individual product I am going to create a card. Now we have the information we did this multiple times it will be easy. Just go with our products dot map and then inside this I need to access the individual one. Uh, let's say product and here inside this I will be calling out my card and provide the information about my product awesome yeah, i also need to provide the key that is going to be product dot id this is great that's done now i need to design my card let me open this one and here all i have to do is first i need to import my css so i don't need to face any type of designing issue basically let me get here to my card card.css once that is done i need to access the information for my product once i have access to this object i can just destructure it i can just say const and since it's an object i can have access in the form of object i'm going to have name price and image that will be my product yeah since i don't need id otherwise i can also include the id now i have access to each one of them now here what i'm going to do is i am going to have access to a div let me also give it a class name that's a card card and inside this i'm going to have my image then i'm simply going to have a p tag that is going to show me the name that will be my product name then i'm going to have another p tag that will show me the price let's say product price and then i'm simply going to have a button 
that is going to just say remove the product if you visualize here this is the image then the product name then the price and then the remove so behind the scene css is included for all of them that means there is a fixed width height and something like this also they are aligned at center so let me add the information now i have everything i have name let me pass it here let's say name also for all tag let me provide the name then i have price let me add it here this is going to be the price then i have image let me add it here this is going to be the image let me save get back here get to our page get to our cart awesome this looks great again we forget the currency symbol let me add it here let me save get back here and this is working fine awesome so we have designed everything related to the component and pages our structure is done everything is working according to the react router this is great now you can add basic functionality like uh, for example console log to this button so if i click on it there is a console log so basically i wanted to say we can have a on click event on this button that can say handle add and on cart page i can have handle remove something like this uh, if i want so that's it now the react router part is done our structuring part is done because we did pretty well one thing is remaining is using our hook so we can update the page name on our home as well as on our cart so let's use our hook it should be easy because we already did this earlier as well so all i have to do is i am going to get a title here and then i'm going to use my use effect to update my document dot title so let's use my use effect here that's imported and this is going to take a function and then it is going to have a dependency uh, so let me take the title here and the title will be the dependency inside this what we are going to do is i'm going to use my document dot title and this will be equal to the title that we are getting which is title that we are getting as our parameter and then i'm going to have a straight line and then my website name you can use dash you can use slash depending on different website i try i'm trying to use all of them during our project for one project i will be using slash for other one i am using dash and this one i'm using some straight line let's call this as shopping cart only or if you want you can use the name shopmate let me save and uh, now I can utilize this use title. So if I need to call it here, I can call it here. Uh, make sure to have it on top right now. Let's say import that will be use title that will be from my hooks and then my use title. Awesome. Let me get here. I'm not going to store this in a variable because it is going to give us issue during the deployment part. Otherwise, you need to use ESLint command to ignore your line. Now you just need to pass the title and here I am just saying cart. So if I save this one on our cart page, we are passing this. It's get here, take this, get here, have this and it's updated. Now every time we visit a new page, we are going to call this on the top. So this will be updated and this is going to return null. If I get back here, now if I visit the card page, you can see it's updated. Something similar I can do for my home page. So I can take this, get into my home, add it here on the top itself and also let me import it. So let me copy this line, add it here and that's done. So if I visit here, get into my home page and okay, I did something wrong. Oh, I added the text card okay let me save get back here home is now home cart is now cart awesome now remember like earlier what we did is during route i can pass the information title here and they should also work fine so that's it that's all about our project shopmate
you can see everything is done that was required we have our react router custom oak structuring the deployment part is pending so what we are going to do well we are going to deploy this one and where we are going to deploy netlify so try to do it yourself otherwise in the next lecture let us try to do the deployment one hey there welcome back now let's move towards deployment part where we just need to push our code to github and then connect github with netlify so the first thing i'm going to do is stop my server and then i'm going to jump on to github create a new repository let me call this as shopmate and this is going to be public and i'm going to create the repository once that is done, you remember you need to initiate the initial setup in your local system. Make sure you have git installed and you have a proper github account. So let's get here. So the first thing I need to do is just have git in it. That is going to initialize my git inside my shopmate folder. Remember you need to be inside shopmate. So let's do git in it. Once that is done, we have initialized this. Then do a simple command for git add git commit and then select our branch add our remote repository and push it so let's do that let's have git add that's done uh, then do git commit i will be adding a message project shopmate that's done now before pushing i need to just select my branch which is going to be main so let me add that it is going to be git branch dash m main once the branch is selected i need to add the origin of my repository which is going to be this shopmate.git so i need to add this here once that is done i can finally push all my code so i can just say git push origin main This is done. If I get here to my repository, if I refresh any type of stuff, you can see things are done. Let me get inside my source and you can see I have all my folders. Great. Now the next step, let me jump onto my Netlify. Click on add a new site and here all I have to do is import an existing project. I need to select my GitHub. It is going to authorize, uh, which is pre-authorized right now. And then here I can search my repo. Shopmate, let me press enter. This is the repository that I want to run. I have selected everything and I am just going to say deploy. Now this might take few minutes. The only thing we can do is wait. Now let me refresh this one. You can see this is working and if I open this one and that is going to be our project. Also you can rename the project inside your domain setting and you will have option to edit it. Let me call it as shopmate-ul something like this and should be fine. Awesome and I need to open this again with the new domain. Things are working fine. Get to my cart. Awesome. So that's how we are going to do deployment. Now you can see this time it was pretty fast because we had all the knowledge about Git, GitHub and the command, how to do all the stuff. That's it. Now in future, if you try to do any change, just push to GitHub, utilize the command for add, commit and push. That is done. So this was the first one, the initial setup. Now you can utilize these command and if I will auto detect the change and then build them. Yep, that's it. Our project is done and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's dive deep with an important topic which is context API and reducers. Now this is an important topic because this gave us power to explore global state management and action on it. Now what I mean by global state and everything these term, if you remember we talked about prop drilling and it's a problem. Suppose I have a tree 
uh, that means I have app, then I have header, then I have other component and then uh, child of that component. So we basically have a tree and if we want to pass certain information from top to bottom, it's a pain. You need to pass them as props and then keep on passing them to their child. That's basically prop drilling. If you can visualize, that will be the easiest part. Now to solve that prop drilling, we utilize these two concepts to store our state and perform complex tasks on them. So during the whole process, you will see hook like use context and use reducer. You will also see some big words. You will see long description here and there and lot of thing. So first thing I want to tell you before diving deep in this whole section that we are going to take a different approach. Initially, we will understand the entire working. We will do everything practical on a proper project and later on, by this whole proper practical implementation, we will automatically understand these terms. I've created a small guide of what we are going to do and what are these steps. So there are two important terms that we just need to understand, which is going to be use context and reducer. During the whole use case, we will also see the terms like context, reducer, action and dispatch. You don't need to understand anything right now. I will be honest, just give me the entire section. I will explain you through practical examples. The problem with this topic is we are mixing too many things. Since they are used together, it's important to understand how they are linked and how to use them. And if I start talking about these jargon words like, okay, dispatch is used with the reuse reducer. Then if I, before that, you need to understand use reducer. But to work with the use reducer, you also need to understand about context properly. So this entire thing cannot be explained or I really don't want to explain with just with some example or diagram. I want to give you a demo and then work on the demo. So if you remember, we built this simple app. This is not working. If you remember, this is not working because we never added some type of functionality. That's where this context API and reducer come into picture. So what we can do now? So we have a state, let's call it as cart list. And every time I click on add to cart, the item is added to that cart list. So basically that cart list is a global state. Earlier we used to have state for a proper component only, a single component. It can be header, it can be a page, it can be a home page, or it can be a cart page. But now we have a global state where we can add and remove anytime. Now you can see all of this is done with the help of context and reducer. So this is a global state where I am adding all of these item. So that global state can handle our cart list. That global state can also handle all the information about the total amount, total value that we need to pay. That can store other stuff as well because it's global. So on any component, on any page, we can access that information. Now, if I get onto the cart page, you can see I have access to all the component that are added to this cart. So these are the three element or I should say three product that I have added. And I also have access to the information about their total because we also created a state and I'm calling it as total. Now, if I remove this, my cart state is updated and my total state is updated. If I go back to home, you can see these two have the remove button, but this one gets back the add to cart button. So what I mean by this explain in simple term. Yep. So now with the help of context API and reducer, we can have a global state. It's simple. Earlier we used to have component level state. Then if we want to pass it, we can pass it through our props. But now we have global level state. So we can use it directly inside our any component, basically inside our entire app. Now reducer, what is this? Why we need it? Well, to perform any type of action, any type of complex action, we use reducer. For example, here, when I click on remove, I'm basically performing an action, which is remove from cart behind the scene. 
and I am also performing an action uh, that says okay update the total. So if I get onto my cart page when I click here it remove the item from my cart list which is my state it also update my total. So I am performing two tasks and wherever I am using the cart list state it get updated automatically. For example this this was the length it is updated this is the length it is updated. If I go to home click on add to cart this is updated get here this is updated this is updated entire list is updated so that's the demo we already built the base version we just need to integrate these two important things context reducer and during this whole process we are going to do a lot of stuff you will understand the term like action you will understand the term like dispatch and i have also mentioned entire step by step process so you don't have to worry much we will follow things in a sequence as we move forward. I hope you got the idea. It's just a global state that can be accessed anywhere and we can perform some complex task. Thank you for following and in the next one let's try to clone this project in a new folder and then update with a new functionality of reducers and context. Hey there, welcome back. Now let's start with the basic code. Either we can just uh, utilize the old previous code that we had with our shopmate project or we can create a new folder. I'm going to call this as shopmate CR which is our context and reducer and inside this I'm going to have all of this code. So I don't want to touch the shopmate folder. I'm going to initialize it from basics. So let's get it. Uh, I'm going to download the zip or I can do a clone but let's download the zip will be easy for everyone. So just download it on your shopmate CR. I'm going to keep it. That is done. Let me extract it. And here let me delete the zip. And also I'm going to take all the files get into my shopmate CR paste it here and remove this one. So basically my aim is to have all the files regarding my project inside this shopmate CR. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a CMD. So here I have my terminal. Now remember we don't have a node project yet. First let me do a quick VS code open. If you observe here we don't have the node project that means node module. So that means I don't have my react yet. If I try to run my server, let me do that. Let's say npm start. You will see that nothing worked because this react script is not recognized. Uh, inside my folder, I don't have node module. So nothing is installed. Do I need to do create react app? Nope. All you need to do is just say npm install. And it will install all the dependencies that is required. Once I do that, it is going to create the node module, install everything here and our project will be running in a minute. This is done. So now things are installed. If I want to run the server, I can say npm start. So that's how you install the file from github, store it on your local repository or I should say local desktop, local folder and you do npm install, get the node package and this is the base code that we are going to work on. Now currently we have everything as sample ready. So let me close this, let me close this, we built this earlier and now we are going to utilize it. So this is the demo that we need to work on. Awesome. Before doing anything else, I need to get this button with our CSS. So all you have to do is get inside your, uh, our server is running. Okay. Get inside your source, get inside your component, your product card and here at the end, just add uh, your CSS for the button. That's it. So this is basically the CSS for our button. Uh, remove button. 
let me save get back here now now here we will have access to the css regarding this type of button earlier it was not there so that's it now we can focus on our work which is going to be related to context api and reducer before ending this lecture let us do base structure so i need to create a folder and i need to call it as context and i'm going to create another folder and i'm going to call it as reducer now you will see calling this as reducers that is also going to be fine during the time of import make sure you use the right term now inside this i am going to create a file basically i am going to store the information of my cart so i am going to create a file calling it as cart context dot js remember the terms should be capital case oh it is c and c are capital now inside my reducer i am going to create a file which is known as cart reducer and this is going to follow camel case that means short cart and then reducer this is how things are followed with the naming part and these both will be linked as we move forward so here inside this we are going to create a context we are going to define all type of method what will happen when we click on uh, add when we click on remove and we will also pass the value to all our app component so that means if i have a cart list i should be able to access it inside my pages inside any page let's suppose inside my home inside my cart or any component inside my header footer anywhere so that will be done everything inside my context in reducers i will mention that if i perform add to cart what type of value i need to return so i need to update everything that will be here so this is going to be interesting i hope you understand the part of structuring the folder that's it you get onto the github install the file do npm install get all the file add the css code for our remove button run our server create these two folder create these two file that's it now in the next lecture let us start working with our card context thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one Hey there, welcome back. Now let us start our task with card context. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a initial state where I am going to store all my stuff. So I am going to say const and this is going to be the initial state. I am going to call it init state or just say initial state. So I want this state to be by default state when a user visit our application. this is going to have two information that is my cart list since we are going to add our product that will be inside this list it will be object with the image id price name everything the second thing i want to store is my total so by default i am going to say it zero so this is the initial state that i want when my user first visit on our website great this is great now the second thing I need to create a context so I can have that context everywhere. Uh, it can be any type of component, page, or anywhere. So for that, we need to use create context, and we need to import that. So this is by default now with React after version 16. So all I have to do is just import my create context, create context from my React. That's it. and i'm going to create it here that is going to be my const and i'm going to call it as cart context now why cart context because this whole state i'm going to refer or store stuff related to my cart which is going to be my cart list and this is will be my cart total so this is cart context and i'm going to go with my create context and this is going to require the initial value that is my initial state awesome this is great the basic is ready now we need to create a provider the provider is going to cover any part where we can access all the value so what we do is we create a provider and we wrap our app basically 
so our app will be able to access all type of value if you see that we wrapped this earlier with our router our browser router so that means our app is able to access all type of react router information it can be utilizing the navigate links and everything else similarly we are going to wrap this app with our provider so our app can access value what type of value our cart list value and our total value and perform actions on them so the next step is going to be working with our provider or I should say create a provider. So how do we create a provider? Well, this is going to be simple. I'm going to have a const and I'm going to call it as card provider. And this is going to be a function where we are going to return things and all of the stuff. So for now, I'm just going to say return null for a moment. So this card provider is going to do or get defined all this stuff. So that means if I am going to cover this with card provider, let me do this for sample purpose. Let's say I have this here. So when I do this, my card provider get access to this app as a child. Remember, if you are working with a component, you pass any type of information that will be passed to our component as a child it is provider yeah so this app will now be access to my provider as a child yep that's how things are followed now here we are going to do lot of stuff but before that what i want to tell is what we return is basically the cart context provider wrapped with child let me explain what we do here is we have this card context now so we utilize this card context provider that is the actual case this is the wrapper that we created but what is done by our context is we have this provider the actual provider to be honest so this is the provider and what we return is this child so we get here we pass this and here we pass some value now currently the value is empty for us so let me define a value here let's say const value i know you are going to get confused just a minute we will clear all the doubts don't worry yeah so this is the base structure that we are going to work what we did is we created our own provider we took the value then we create utilize the card provider the actual card provider we are returning this card provider we are returning certain values and then we are returning this to child so basically the app which is the child here will have access to all the values now values will have our entire state and all the methods that we are going to define what i mean by this here if you observe if i talk about add this is some content this is accessed by my entire app the total it's a value the length it's a value the object it's a value but there is not just value but function like add to cart is a function remove from cart is a function so this value is going to have multiple things in this object i hope you got the idea what we did we can directly use this cart context provider here but then we need to import value here and then we need to pass value here so instead of that what we did is we created our own provider i hope you got the base idea just wait for the entire section so we understand everything step by step so that's all about the provider part we can use directly this here but then we need to import the value at this point of time we are going to import the manual provider so let's import that here i am going to import my cart provider which we created that will be from our context slash cart provider awesome and i also need to export this if i say export let me save get back here 
you can see currently I don't have problem here I don't have any type of error what is happening is we are passing this it gets to our cart context it's get here it get here whatever the value we have will be accessed by our children now let's try to do a demo value and try to see how we can have it so before the demo value I also need to define one more thing now this one more thing is going to be use cart basically we are going to create a function that will help all the component to access that information so if I am inside my uh, cart page I can say use cart and it will give me power to use that cart with all the values so if I am inside my component let's say header or card component I will say use cart and it will have option to use the cart because we know we are providing this power to children but children need to utilize use card so use cart uh, you can call it anything else but and we are going to export this because it will be used with every component so I'm going to say const and then there will be use cart so this is going to be a function let me have this so all I'm going to have is I'm going to create a context which will be utilized by everyone and here we need to call use context that is important and this use uh, accept a context object the value return from react uh, dot create context and return the current context value as given by the nearest and everything so we basically need to provide this card context yeah and this function is going to return the context basically context now you don't need to create this function what you can do is you can directly return this because ultimately we are doing the same we are uh, getting a return from this storing in this context and then returning that context so this use card gave us power to call and access all the values so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a manual value and let's say total is zero okay now if I get into any component I can access that value let's go to card page and here add the total value now how I need to use that well inside our card page I just need to first import that let's say my use card uh, that will be from my context slash card context awesome now whenever I call this which is basically my use card it is going to return me all the value and I can destructure it so currently I just have total so I'm going to say use cart I just need to call it now this is going to return me total because that is the only thing that I am returning inside my value here we will perform everything with our initial state update our cart and do all this stuff and then uh, provide to the value so currently we just have only one I am going to return the total now I have access to this total I can perform anything and uh, place it anywhere for example I can have my total here let me save get back here uh, go to my card page you can see I'm printing zero let's try to provide any other value let's say here I provide 50 let me save go here you can see now it's 50 and here uh, I need to add a currency symbol so it will be dollar you can work with pound rupee or any other currency now it is fifty dollar so that's how we create something global and now we can have access to this value information everywhere I can add multiple other stuff I can add cart list but currently it's empty so I'm not doing that but I can provide a cart list as well so that's how I am going to work with my context what I did well first I created initial value that's great I know that when a user visit the website this is the initial value they should work with okay then I utilize my create context so that means for one particular instance since we are dealing with cart only that means we are storing the information related to cart in our state we are creating the context related to our cart with the initial value that's great now this cart require information that what is the component or pages I need to provide information to 
So we create a custom provider and utilize the card context provider, pass all the value and provided the app. This is great. Now my card knows that I need to apply over or I need to wrap my entire app. Uh, maybe we don't want entire app. Maybe we want a particular component. So instead of covering this entire app uh, inside our index, we can cover that particular component as well. But we want our entire app. So we can provide all the value. Then we created our custom method use cart. Why? So we can have access to all the information that we provided to our values. Uh, so if I want to access my total value, I can do that. Remember, we don't need this to be honest. What we can do is on each page, on each component where we need to access the value, we can directly do this. It is going to return us all the values. But then we need to export our card context. Let me give this a value. Let me give you an idea. Let me comment this out. Okay. And let me try to export this export card context. Let me get here instead of use card. Let's say card context. Okay. I get this now instead of use card, I'm going to utilize my use context basically. I've imported it. I need to provide card context. Yep. And it is going to return me the same thing. If I get back here, you can see it's still 50. Now, why we give it a custom name? Why we create this? Because currently we only have one context card context. Suppose you have two, maybe you have product context as well. Maybe you have counter context as well, or maybe you are using anything else in your website or app then there is going to be multiple use context, use context, use context. You need to provide these type of context and it will get confusing. Suppose you are getting, uh, maybe you have this for counter, let's say counter. And then you have another one. Maybe this is for filter because yeah, there will be sorting and anything. Uh, so this is good returning something else. This is returning something else. And then you need to import all of them. Now this get confusing instead of this, why not just create a custom one with a name here. I knew that this is cart, so it's easy. And here you don't even need to do like this. You can directly return use context, which will be directly a one line thing. Remember, so I can just go here and this will be a one line thing. So I hope you got the idea. Let me uncomment this. Let me remove the export. Let me get back here and do all the changes. Yep. That's how we are going to deal with. And yep, that's how we are going to work here and refresh. I still have access to this $50. So I hope you got the idea about context. I know this is confusing, but the steps are simple and their use case is also simple. We did a proper practical to pass our total. Now inside our cart provider, lot of method we need to define for add to cart, for remove from cart, update our total basically, and then pass all of them here inside our value. So our entire app can access it. That's all for this one. Now in the next one, let us talk about our reducer as well as the insider thing, or I should say the inside working of this whole provider. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now in the previous lecture, we completed our card context not exactly completed, but we understood the whole crux of card context. Now we need to utilize card reducer as well. Now things will be simple to be honest. We just need to create a card reducer and define all type of cases that what we need to return with add to cart, remove to cart and update total. So if we have three cases, now there will be two information that will be available to us that is state, the updated state. So we will have information about our cart list and total updated information and we will have action. 
So action will have two information type that is uh, when we say perform something what we need to perform that is information will be stored in type. We need to perform add to cart or remove cart or update that information and then there will be a payload payload is basically the value for that particular moment so if i say add to cart which product i need to add to cart so the product information will be stored in a payload we are going to explore all of this don't worry so uh, let me just uh, have this here let's say export it is going to be const and it will be cart reducer let me define this and it is going to have two things state and action i will explain everything again so you don't have to uh, just jot it down you will have them in your memory automatically now let me destruct my action uh, this is type and payload yep and it will be through my action so there will be certain type of cases that we need to handle and let me use my switch so we can handle all of them so we need to pro provide the type here and then there will be multiple cases so let's say i have certain case of add to cart then i'm going to have a return value so if we perform add to cart what i need to return let me pause it here and move towards our card context so i can explain the other part where this cart reducer is going to be used so when we are inside our card context we need to utilize use reducer yep and this use reducer basically return two things our state that is going to have information of everything about our cart list about our total everything and then dispatch so dispatch is like set state but with more power and here we need to just provide the value on which reducer i need to perform all of this so i'm going to say cart reducer and the other thing i need to provide is the initial state initial state yep i hope everything is imported yeah let me save so what we are doing is we are utilizing this use reducer we are passing the cart reducer and we are passing the initial state what happened here is this is going to return us a state now this state is not just one state it handles multiple state earlier we we used to have only one state for one particular thing it can be counter and then set counter now this state is basically multiple things cart list total and we can have more things here so this state can help us to handle all of this information now if i say state dot value or dot total it will be zero by default let's say state dot total here it is going to be the total value that i am going to pass to my children and this is the state that we are going to use so if i pass my cart list here inside my value and let's say it will be state dot cart list so this is state is updated and it holds the current value this is the initial value but suppose i have 10 item in cards this state is going to hold that 10 item along with the information so this is the state that we need to work with and then the dispatch now what is this dispatch this dispatch is basically the method that we can apply on this state remember earlier we use counter and then set counter set counter can only perform one thing that is to set a newer value to that particular counter remember but now with dispatch we can perform anything that we are defining here yep this whole case thing is utilized by dispatch so if i say add to cart this is the way we define stuff here it should be capital with underscores then i'm going to leave it here right now i'm just going to add multiple cases let's say i have other case which is going to be remove from cart and we are going to return something don't worry we will talk about it then i'm going to add third case let's say update total 
and then we are going to return something and the last thing i'm going to have a default value which is utilized to throw an error to be honest so i'm going to say uh, throw new error error and i can say no case found in card reducer let me save yep we still need to return some value but this is the whole thing so dispatch give me power to call them remember this is the state which handles multiple state indirectly this is dispatch which is a bigger version or powerful version of set state set counter something like that set movies set products so here dispatch can do lot more thing not just set we can add one particular item we can remove one particular item from our objects we can perform other thing as well so this is where dispatch come into picture awesome this is great now we feel powerful so what we can do well the first thing we can do is we can define individual method here only and inside these individual method we can say okay do this do that we can then inside that we can utilize dispatch so for example i am going to provide const add to cart this is an individual method and here i am going to access a product that i want to add to cart and inside this we will do that so suppose from my product card suppose this product card i click on this button add to cart i have access to my product information id name price and image everything so when i click on add to cart i will pass that information directly to my add to cart method i will say product this is the product that i want to add to my cart okay awesome so i will update my state dot cart list yep so what i am going to do i will have my state dot cart list and i will concat that means i am just going to add it at the end i will say concat and i will pass this product awesome so this is going to return me an updated list or i should say i will store this in a updated list const and i am going to say updated cart so this is the updated cart but remember we haven't utilized this dispatch till now so our cart is not updated really we just stored the updated information remember this method is not going to update the state here we just concatenated and created a new cart list so how i am going to update it remember when we worked with use state we had state and set state here we have dispatch so we need to utilize the dispatch yep and with dispatch we need to pass a object why because this dispatch is usually hold two information our type and our payload well you will now realize why i was talking about all of this so type is basically what we need to perform we need to perform add to cart so that is going to be the type here here i am going to say perform add to cart now payload is again going to be an object because we can pass multiple values currently we are just passing the information for cart so i can just say products what i am adding to cart here you can give any term you can say product products or any other term depending on you because this is defined by us so we are going to say products and what i am going to say a updated cart okay so when i say dispatch it is going to get into my cart reducer it is going to say if the type that we are passing is available we pass add to cart we will get into the case of add to cart and we will update our entire stuff so what i am going to do i am going to return all the previous state because state is not just one item not just cart list it is also the total so here i am going to return everything and i am going to update my cart list 
Now cart list. Now how I'm going to access the updated content? Well, I have my payload which I got. Remember, we pass the payload. Inside this, we have product. So I can access this which is dot products. Yep. So if I click on add to cart now, what it is going to do is, uh, let me also save this. Yeah. So if I click on add to cart, because I have this method, if I click on add to cart, I am going to get this product information here. I am going to concatenate it with state, but we cannot edit this default state. So what we do is I'm just going to have this old uh, list. I should say array, old array. I add this product at the last of this array and I create this updated cart list or cart, whatever you want to call, let's say cart list. I have this updated cart list. Now, if you remember with use state, we had state and then set state. Similarly, here we have dispatch if we want to update any type of state value. So we call to dispatch, we say this is the type and this is the payload. Now you realize why we had these two information state and action to our cart. State is basically the current values that our state is holding and action is basically the information that we are passing, which is our type and payload. So we destruct these two values. We have all the cases. We check if this is of type, whatever we are trying to say, if there is any case to that, it's okay. Otherwise we are going to get into default. Fortunately, we had a case of add to cart. We return all the previous values plus the updated value to our cart list with the value of payload.products. Now one thing you can call this as ABC and here it will be ABC because ultimately we are returning this payload as an object and this is something like key value pair. So here we are calling to that particular key. I hope you got the idea. Now we are going to repeat this again. Don't worry. You just need to understand that how the flow is working. Rest terms and this dispatch and everything you will learn yourself as we move forward. But you just need to understand the flow so we can add other flow work as well. What I mean by other flow work? Well, now if I need to add remove from cart. Let's say remove from cart. It should be easy. When I'm going to remove anything from cart, again, I'm going to get an information from product. Why? Because suppose on my cart page, let me open that. Yep. Here, suppose I click on this remove button. I'm going to call that function remove from cart and I'm going to get the information for my product, which product I need to remove. Yep, I get the information that, okay, I need to remove this, this particular product. So now again, I have access to the state so I can check my cart list and check if the product exists or not. I can filter out this stuff, create an updated list. And then I also have access to this dispatch. I can go to my remove cart and return the updated stuff, something similar. Let's do that. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to have my updated cart list. Okay, so I can access my state dot cart list now. And here I'm going to filter out stuff. How I'm going to filter? Well, I'm going to visit each product and I'm going to check if the ID matches or not. If the ID match, I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to keep all the other products. So the one which we don't want will be left out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the current product inside this cart list. So I'm going, just going to say current. If I have 10, I'm going to go from first, second, third, fourth and keep on following. Select the current product and match the ID, current dot ID. If they are equal, then it's a problem. I don't want to, I don't want to keep the equal one. This is going to return true and our updated card will left with one product. That means the one which matches it. I want to keep the other nine. If I have 10, I want to keep the nine, which doesn't match the ID and one will be left out. Yep. Now what I need to do, I need to call the dispatch to update my state. 
so this is going to have two information again that will be my type what is the type remove from cart this should be exact remove from cart let me do that and then i need to pass payload this will be an object and it can have multiple information but we are going to pass the product so let's say products and which is updated to updated card list let me save get here inside reduce i will have access to everything i want to keep everything as it is with my state but i want to update my cart list with this particular type and i just need to update my pay cart list with the value of payload dot products let me save and this should be fine now i am going to remove this one for now so we can work on update total in a while but these two are okay and now we can perform all type of method here this is done this looks fine to me but this the value we need to update so our entire app can access all of this stuff so we have total we have cart now we need to provide add to cart to our entire app let's do that let's say add to cart we also need to provide remove from cart to our entire product or i should say app remove from cart let me save now let's do fun stuff let me try to open product card let, let me arrange this yeah so now remember we have used card so we can access all of this so now inside my product card what i am going to do is i am going to utilize my use card and access all these method let's do that here i am going to get into my import i am going to utilize my use card that will be from context slash card context now here what i am going to do is i am going to access them i will have access to individual one let's say i want access to cart list or just say add to cart method uh, that will be from my use cart that's it now i have access to this method so that means here i can call it let's say on click that means on click of this button i can call this add to cart and i can provide this product information let's do that on click call this add to cart and provide the product awesome and uh, let's do console so not just this let's remove this let's have handle add so we can add multiple line of code let's say i have a function function handle add now what i am going to do is uh, i am going to call this that's for sure let's do product but i am also going to access the cart list let's say cart list and here i am going to console log the cart list console log my cart list let me save now if i get here get here a use reducer is not defined on this page i need to import this let me add it here let me add it here let me save get back here yeah so if i get to home if i click on inspect jump onto my console if i click on add to cart it's empty click on add to cart now we have the product so it's visible so that means i am able to add product awesome now let me get back to my vs code so here that means i am able to work around with this add to cart this is great all i have to do right now is i can now remove this handle add and i have the power to add to cart and provide this product information awesome similarly on my cart 
I have the power to delete it with a click only on click I can just call uh, first I need to import it basically it's so something similar now instead of add to cart it will be removed from cart I don't need cart list here I also don't need cart list here so I have power of remote to cart and I just need to provide the product here that's it so that's how this is going to work pretty simple to be honest if we look at larger picture I don't need to pass prop to each one of them capture the prop nope I have access to all these method wherever I want in one case also here I am just using one of them I have access to all of these values so this is great there will be certain conditions that we need to add and we will be talking about them in the next one but that's the whole bigger picture uh, of context and reducer together let me give you a quick revision what we did so we created our reducer in which we get access to two information which is our state and our action now what about these two information well state is going to have access to all the updated information the last updated basically so we have about all the things that our state should hold in our app uh, which will be total and cart list for example right now so our state holds that information and whenever we call this we also have a action that is going to have type and payload type is basically what we are trying to perform payload is basically the updated information that we are updating uh, in our case this was cart list but this all of this is hard to understand unless and until we understand this part so use reducer basically take the initial state or as well as it take the cart reducer whatever we need to uh, inform in terms of method that we need to perform and everything why because in return this gave us the access to all type of state content as well as the superpower version of set state now we are not just setting that state but we are defining what exact type we need to set for and what will be the value so we define custom function we take the input or I should say argument at the time of calling them and we take them here as a parameter we perform certain step inside to get customized updated value I should say we call the dispatch now dispatch will be called whenever we want to update any stuff and we pass type we pass payload whenever we call dispatch we get here inside our reducer we check the type if it's available here great suppose it was add to cart we keep everything and also update the cart list with the updated value that we passed now this name can be anything else also we just need to provide it here this all is done and this will be accessed by everywhere because we added this in value and value is passed to our provider so our app is able to access it everywhere so that's the whole part now we can define other method so we defined remove from cart updated our list provided the dispatch and that's done so that's all now in the next one let us also talk about how to update total and update our entire app with these method values state and update it for example here inside header I need to update cart list dot length so I can have the exact number of the product like this here you can see now inside that cart I need to access the total I need to access the length as well as I need to get all the product and convert them into individual card on here on my home page I also need to check if my product is in cart then I need to show remove otherwise I need to show add to cart so there are a few tasks that are remaining and that we will be doing in the next one.
Hey there, welcome back. Now let's talk about how we are going to get final total for our cart list. So suppose we have this cart list. If I get here, I need the final total here. How we are going to do that? We are going to have multiple item in our cart list. Either what we can do is we can access our state dot cart list and then access the price of individual product in our list and then calculate and show it here. This can be one way. But uh, we every time we update our cart list, we need to update this as well. So what we need to do? Well, we can create a method and we can call it every time we update our cart. So we can update our cart at the time of adding and we update our cart at the time of removing. So what we can do? Well, we can have a function. Let's say update total. Yep. It is going to get the cart list. So I'm going to say products and it is going to uh, start our count. Let's say total equals to zero. Remember this time I'm using let. Why? Because I'm going to update this. This is not constant. This will be updated. So let's say I have this total and what I'm going to do, whatever the products I'm uh, getting as a parameter, I'm going to access them this is products and I'm going to visit each one of them each individual item let's say for each inside this I will access the individual item this is product remember this is singular and once I access this individual item I am going to update my total this total so what will be the total total is going to be total equals to total plus product dot price so what we are going to do here we start our total with zero plus suppose i have these three item uh, these three one two three in my cart list let me get here so what we are going to do we are going to start with total equals to zero plus my price list for product 149 then in the next loop because it's for each it will be 149 plus my next one 49 then in the next one it will be 198 plus my 179 so total it will be 337 in the third loop that will be my total so we can utilize for each yep that is going to work and once we have the updated price what we are going to do well, we are going to call our dispatch and update everything. So let's say I have this dispatch. Again, it is going to define the type and we haven't defined the type in our cart reducer. We need to do that. Let's say update underscore total. And the second thing we need to pass, which is going to be payload. Again, this payload is going to be an object and it will be total and total. I'm going to call it total only. Uh, since these are two same term, I can use the shorthand method. So let me save. Now also define it here. Let me get the case here. Case, it is going to be update underscore total. Now what we need to return this time with my total. So all the state item is going to remain same. And I just need to update my total. So I'm going to say total and this will be payload dot total. This is great. Now when we are going to call this because we are not going to call this manually. For example, add to cart is called manually by us when we click on the button. Uh, remove from cart is called manually from us when we click on the button. When we need to call total. Well, after adding the item our state is updated so here we added our item everything related to dispatch here we updated our list so what we can do is we can call our updated total here with the updated list because this is the same list that we are passing here and updating our state because this is the same list that we are passing here so that means we can update it here exactly the same way we can update it after removing the item so this is the updated list so that means 
when we click on remove from cart i will get here suppose i have 10 item i will filter out the nine item where my id don't match i will keep these nine item here i will call the total as well as dispatch so total is going to cal recalculate all the stuff total is going to have the information here instead of this you can also call this after dispatch that will make more sense but totally our own requirement because ultimately we need to perform both of them now let me save what if i jump here try to perform anything our total is not going to be updated because we need to access the total on our cart page yep you need to visit cart page here and inside this we need to access now let's test out on our website so if i visit here you can see it's zero why well because the calculation of total will be performed when we add or remove it's currently not updated so even if i refresh nothing will be updated here why because total will be calculated only on add and remove now if i add any item it will be updated so this list is not updated remember this is not the list actual list but the total is updated because we are just demonstrating total on our page if i jump onto my card page we are just demonstrating total so let me also access my cart list here cart list and let, what i'm going to do just to a console log here console.log and let's say my cart list it should be comma let's have this let's have a console log here let me save get back here get into my inspect console so these are the three item for my total uh, item zeroth which is 149 then item first which is 39 then item second which is 199 so the total is 387 now i have access to this cart list instead of using this random product list i don't need to use that what i can do i can utilize this cart list and show the map for individual product also the length can be for my cart list now i don't need a hand coded list now so if i get if i save this one get back here you can see these are the three item in my cart list i also have inside my card i have remove so that means this is updated everything is updated here and get back here add 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 go to my cart list these are the three item if i click on remove 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 things are working now what i need to do jump onto my header and also update this cart list let's do that uh, get into my header how i'm going to do that well i only need access to my cart list so let's say const and i need cart list from or oh, equals to my use cart and i just need to import that use cart it's there and now i have access to this i can just say cart list dot length if i save get back here currently it's zero get back click on add to cart add to cart it's two add to cart it's three go to my cart this is updated one if i remove remove 149 149 one cart if i remove this is zero this is zero this is zero so now we are not doing prop drilling we are directly accessing all the information and this looks fun to be honest now one thing is remaining which is when i click on add to cart i don't want this add to cart button after one edition so how i can control this well i can add a condition inside my product card i can check if this product is already in my cart then show remove uh, remove from cart something like this so every time i load this whole product i am going to check this so i am going to say use effect here so this is going to take a function and also 
some dependencies which we'll be talking about in a minute now what we need to do we need to check if my product is in cart or not so i'm going to check if product is in cart or not how to check that well we will have access to our cart list let's say cart list so i'm going to access this cart list i'm going to find it well i'm just checking if this is available in my cart list or not if yes then i'm going to get true otherwise i'm going to get false so i'm going to have access to the individual products inside this and i am going to check if the individual product i should say element here otherwise well the scope for this is only this but i have already a term like here so i am going to say cart item cart item so the individual cart item i am going to check if the cart item here is equals to equals to equals to my product dot id product dot id or i can directly fetch my id here and then i can just check id here i am checking cart dot id is equals to my product id the product that i am currently testing so if this is equal that means if we find this we are going to return true if this is true then show remove button otherwise by default it's uh, add to cart button i am going to have a state const uh, i am going to say is in cart and then set is in cart that will be a proper use state case by default it's false and if we find this product in cart then we are going to make it true otherwise it's false so i'm going to have a condition if we find this product in cart true then we will set is in cart to true else this is false only so it's a set in cart is false looks good to me this condition is easy now use state when we are working inside uh, our component then use state is best now here i can add a condition uh, that is ternary operator and i can check is in cart is true then i need to show the remove button otherwise i need to show the add button let's take this let's add this here and the remove button here so this will say remove and this will be remove from cart now remove from cart and i need to import this one from my where, where, where we use cart let me arrange this add to cart after my cart list so i have a sync let me save okay awesome now if you if i give you a quick revision what we did but before that let me check if this is working or not get here refresh no product in card if i click on add to card okay this is not working oh we haven't added dependency so by default it's false and we are not updating when we change the card so what we need to do is we need to check whenever our cart list is updated or not so our cart list is updated we are going to update this stuff also i am using id inside this uh, this might give me a warning let me save let me check dependency missing for id i need to add this so let me add my id let me save check it's successful okay now let's save get here now i can see this remove so uh, i need to add a class here class name remove so this is red now you can see this is red add to cart add to cart okay let me refresh everything is gone add to cart add to cart go to my cart these are the two remove remove working fine go to my home add to cart add to cart add to cart go this is the total these are the three item remove 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 
get here add to cart remove add to cart remove add to cart go to cart home remove and that's it so i hope you got the idea what we just did so we already have all the method and function defined inside use cart we access the cart list access remove to cart and access add to cart now here what we just did well to have this remove button functionality we first need to check if this individual product is in my cart list or not and we need to check this every time for each individual one so what we did is we utilize a use effect and we checked if inside my cart list that we are accessing from use cart if inside this cart list if i find my current product id equals to the cart list item id if this is equal that means this is going to return true that means my product is in cart now here i need to add a condition if product is in cart then show remove otherwise show add how to do that well we can create a component state uh, with is in cart set is in cart if my product is in cart then set it to true otherwise false and we are utilizing this here uh, this is in cart here if this is true show remove button otherwise add that was simple to have a different button i added class as remove now the other thing is this use effect only rerun or re-render when we change our cart list so if i update my cart that means if i say add this should be updated this button should be this condition should be updated because now add should be gone and remove should be visible so we need to have a cart list and also the id because it's a external dependency so we need to add that so that's how we have the functionality for this button as well okay that's done the entire project is done now in the next one let's talk about things in term of definitions in terms of theory in terms of official languages that we have till now we did everything practical and i hope you understand how practical is working because now if i say to add any other specific functionality you can do that you understand that you need to create a context and you need to have initial value you need to create your context you need to have a provider that will have all the individual method you need to pass these values into your provider that will be accessed by your child there is a use state you also understand that these are the method so i hope you understand everything now and you cannot understand things in one go it will be happen when you practice yourself you will get every practical idea but now let's talk about in definitions like what you will define a dispatch for me dispatch is simple it is a form of set state but it is more powerful we can provide a custom type that what i need to perform and i can provide a custom payload or i should say a value that will be performed with the help of my reducer this is not a official definition but that's how dispatch is going to work so in the next one let us try to understand the official terms and see how we can explore that I hope you got the entire practical flow and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now in this one, let us talk about the official term as well as deploy our project on Netlify. It's optional, we now understand how to do that. So it's just basic practice. Now if you jump on to the terms these are the terms we have context reducer action use context use reducer and dispatch well what is context it's an api given by react that allow us to pass information to child component without using props well what we mean by context is this create context that takes some initial state value and this also give us access to a provider where we can pass the current updated value to our child. So this is basically the context that allow passing information to child component without prop. Now you will see the term use context. Well, it's a hook that uh, allow function component to take advantage of context API. What I mean by this is this use context help us to access all the information. Here we customized use context 
to use cart and then utilize this use cart to access this information. If you remember, we also utilize use context here instead of use cart. Ultimately, use cart is just the return of use context here. If you observe, this returns context and we return this. It's basically the data to be honest. And here we are accessing, we are calling this, it is returning the data. Basically the values. Now here we have a reducer which is basically a pure function accepting a state and action returning a new state. So if I talk about this, uh, here, this is a reducer which accept state and action and it return a new state. So what we do is we try to map different type of cases and return updated state. So here for example we are updating our cart list. If you observe here we are updating our total for different type. Remember then we have action. So it's an object literal which describe a change to state. Now change to state what I mean by this? Well action hold two information. What type of information I need to change? And what is the new information or what is the new value? So the type is add to cart, remove from cart or update total. And what is the new value which is carrying with my payload. Now we already covered use context. Then there is use reducer. A react hooked used in place of use state generally for more complex state. What I mean by this? If you observe here, we utilize use reducer it return state and set it in basic term this state is going to have multiple information and then this is dispatch which can perform multiple things what multiple things well for that we have provided cart reducer and this initial state is for our state so this cart reducer is going to hold multiple type of dispatch method remember it's not just set state it's basically more not just set counter or set movies, set product. It's more than that. We can perform custom things together. Awesome. So this is basic use of use reducer. Then we have dispatch, a function returned to us by use reducer. Yup, that's the exact thing. Which send action object to reducer function. Yeah, so uh, this help us to send the action object to reducer. This is the action object. Why action object? Because it holds type and payload. If you observe here, yeah, this is the action. This is type and payload that we are trying to send from our dispatch. So that's the whole term game at basic level. Now, if you jump onto the official React documentation, you will get the idea that they first talk about prop drilling. We understood that that. We are passing information on trees, for example, from our app to header, then to other element child, like maybe product list page, then product card page and keep on following. So there is alternative method and then they start discussing about all of this context that we can create a context, pass some information and then it can be accessed everywhere. Later they talk about how we can use the provider, pass the value and cover the child. Remember here they are covering a smaller section that means level context. But we were covering the entire app so we can have information access to entire app. If you observe here we covered the entire app so that means our value will be accessed everywhere. If we want to cover only one two component we can do that. Maybe we want to just cover headers we can do that. So they described everything here. Later on, they also described about uh, use context, which is a react hook that help us to read and subscribe to context. Now what does read means? Well, we get here since we named it as use cart. So we read the information, which is total and cart list. And we also subscribe this. What I mean by this is if this cart list is updated, the value will be updated automatically. This is the basic meaning. So suppose if I am here, if I click here, this is also updated automatically. I'm not using a use effect to update this. It's automatic update. Remember this point, not just here, also here. So if I remove this, this is updated. 
so it's basically auto updated i am not using a use effect for them it's awesome then they talk about the how to utilize this use case and they also talk about how to have providers so they have theme context provider for a single form and this is a great way to utilize level context that means you are just covering the form so they took other example as well we have already covered this we took the best example of cart because that's the most used one in real life now here they talk about the use reducer where we need to pass reducer we need to pass initial argument it return a state and dispatch and all the other things they also talk about the logic that we already covered something like this function which is handle add task and then all of this handle change task then all of this so that's how things are going to work remember these functions that we defined don't need to be just in uh, here we can have on uh, reducer and then import them but then it will be just increasing the complexity this is the easiest way to sort them because at the end of the day we need to carry them in value and then provide it here it doesn't make sense to store them somewhere else and get it them here so this all of this is important because this dispatch can be called because of reducer only that's how things are going to work now remember on refresh everything will be gone why because we are not storing any stuff if i refresh things are gone either we store stuff in our initial state with local storage if you remember with use state we did that for our theme for add to cart or anything else so if we want we need to store stuff in local storage that's all now let me just push to our new repository let's create that let's say shop mate cr which is basically context and reducer and i'm going to click on create repository and then i have my file ready i just need to get inside my shop mate project and also let me stop my server get back here and all i have to do is first initialize the git repository that is done then i just need to add everything this is done if you get a warning again make sure to utilize this command once my add is done all i have to do is push a commit message let's say git commit minus m it's uh, integrating context and reducer now i'm going to select the branch let's say git branch dash m main then i just need to add my repository which i just created which is this let me do that that's done now i just need to push to main so let's do that let's say get push origin main that's done now if i get here refresh i have all my files this is great the other thing i need to do i need to get here uh, import an uh, existing project just authorize this again now i can search it so i have my shopmate cr get here pass the name press enter i will have access to my repository and let me try to deploy the site get into domain setting try to update the name let's say shopmate cr dot dash ul that should be better i should have named my repository as shopmate cr only but it's okay it's deployed let me refresh get into site overview it's in still in progress now let me refresh this one now so it's done let me open this one yeah it's working so this is the version of context and reducer 
and it's working fine one thing you can do is update the title so you know the difference the previous one and this one so this is with context and reducer you can either change the name to cr cart or add a title that would be much better so let me get here uh, close this get here inside my header i can update this to cr cart that is context and reducer cart or maybe update the page title depending on us because we have access to that on our home i can update the page title here so all you have to do update then push all the changes again get add get commit get push that's done i hope you got the idea hope you had great journey just make sure you understand the flow make sure you understand the practical use case and everything will be fine with context and reducer thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now in this lecture i am going to cover redux in simple term talk about some basics in the next lecture we will dive deep with everything take this one as a introduction lecture so what is this and why we require it well it's a open source javascript library that means we can use it with any javascript application it's not for react only we can use redux with vue with angular or with any other javascript app so it's a javascript library that's the most important thing now you might be thinking well why we need it if you know that when we work with use state we get into prop drilling if we want to pass certain information from one component to other to other to other we took an example earlier as well but let's visualize this again maybe we have a cart list and every time we add some product in our cart we need that information on our header as well as well as on different other places we need it on our cart page we need it on our product page as well as on product card itself that if this particular product is inside the cart or not let me take an example here suppose i have a app if i click on add to cart now at this point of time this header currently holds the information that this product is on cart or not this product card currently have information that if this is inside cart or not because they can show if it's in cart show remove otherwise show add to cart the cart page hold information if this product is inside cart or not and then there is cart card so there are lot of component that need this information and we are passing this information through prop drilling how about we use a centralized way a centralized way is to store data to share it so it can stay consistent and we can perform certain task on it now what i mean by this centralized data that stay consistent suppose i added another product in cart and if i remove this here my header is updated along with my home page is updated along with my product card is updated so it's consistent that means information is consistent on every single component if i remove this here on the product card i can go to my cart page and this is gone because the information is consistent and here you can also understand that we can perform different type of actions on it for example this is add and i can perform a remove one i can perform add here and then i can perform remove here so there are multiple type of actions that i can perform which is for our cart it was add and remove but maybe i am working with a theme then it can be toggle the theme from multiple option it can be dark light or something else maybe i am working with locations so i need to store multiple locations all at once it can be counter so i will have increment decrement something like this so there are multiple actions that we want to perform on our state and the best with redux is everything is consistent on each component so i can access them and perform any type of action anywhere awesome the next important thing with redux is that it comes with a proper handy tool which we are going to utilize in a while we call this as redux dev tool so if i get into inspect and then redux 
here you will see this tool and it store all our information we use it to debug everything you can see currently i have a state with my application i can add and once i add my total is updated now this is the information that is stored here if i add another item you will see i have two item you will see how we work with each individual part you can access the chart you will have information about each stage and each process so this tool is going to help us a lot okay this is great so redux is basically a javascript library how we are going to utilize it with react well for that if you scroll down you will see react redux and redux toolkit react redux is basically a library that help us to utilize this power of redux and redux toolkit is basically a way to write these logic well don't worry we are going to explore everything in detail you just need to understand that we need to install react redux and redux toolkit after the installation we will create certain files and utilize them okay this is great that means i can utilize redux with our react using redux toolkit and react redux right yep that's how we are going to work with it now the next thing how this whole process work well let's take an example let's take this example on our example app as well as through visualization so everything flow in a proper way the first step starts with you or i should say component where this whole process start we start with action creator that means we have this application we try to create a action it can be add it can be remove any type of action suppose if i click on this add to cart here i created a action if you see this action currently hold two information my type and my payload well what are they well this action type is basically what i am doing i am doing a add call to my cart you will understand more about this once we start writing code but here you can see it's a type which is calling add to our cart that is great so this is action part 1 then here we have part 2 that is the second thing inside our action which is payload well what is this well payload is basically the information that we are carrying why we need information well here you just clicked on add to cart that means you need this product information so you can add to cart well this payload carry that information that this is the product id this is the name this is the price of that product and this is the image that means we take this information and carry with our payload so we can move forward in our next stage now what is the next stage well this action of add along with payload should be dispatched well yep this is an important word dispatch we use dispatch to send action to update the data here we are carrying the payload so we utilize dispatch we call the add along with the information of payload this is great along with the information of our product okay awesome now where this information goes well this information goes to reducer where we have defined what add is going to do what remove is going to do and it now have access to our action which we just provided it also have access to previous state so it can add this to our previous state or if we click on remove it will remove that from that state what i mean by this well let's visualize this if i refresh click on add and if i click on this state here we have the state so whenever i click on that add we perform all the action stuff we perform the dispatch stuff we now get into our reducer and we update this cart list so they now have access to the previous information and they added this new information if i add another one so they have access to this previous information and they have updated the new one that means reducer manage the state like this cart list and returns the updated state that is this updated one so it holds the previous one as well as perform all the task if it is add or delete and then returns the updated one this is awesome now where it is going to return 
well it is going to return to a central storage this is our central storage basically where we have all the updated information so our central storage is going to have this information now remember this central storage hold a subscription model <laughs> what is this model that means since it's a central storage everywhere we use this storage it's get updated automatically if we add remove or update anything that means if i remove this since it's a central storage this is updated this is updated our card page is updated if i remove this this is updated this is updated and our home page is updated so the subscription actually updates all our component so that's how the flow works we have a component or i should say the action creator that help us to create action which hold two information type and payload we utilize dispatch to send action and update the data we go to reducer where everything is defined what add is going to do what remove is going to do remember this reducer also hold information about our action and state so that means if i am adding anything it already have access to previous state and it will add the data that we are sharing if we are saying remove then it will remove that data because it already have that information once this process is done it is going to update our central store and central store is going to update all our subscription so basically these all are the component which is utilizing these subscription and that's how we are following the flow of react redux what is this toolkit well it's a standard way to write our redux logic what i mean by this well things were complicated with redux as well as if you have knowledge about context api and reducers redux toolkit simplifies everything they divide things into slices and then there is a central storage the central storage or i should say store.js is going to handle all these slices so if you are working with cart you will have cart slice if you are working with location you will have location slice if you are working with theme you will have theme slice and all of this will be connected to our store later on this store will be accessed by our entire app how well we are going to wrap our entire app i should say the app component with our provider and we are going to provide this store that will help us to have all of this now before moving forward i want to give you a quick understanding about the code well i'm showing you the code beforehand so you understand things so you visualize things better now if i just get into index.js here you can see i have covered the entire app with a provider and i am passing this store so that means this store will be accessed over our entire app now what is this store well this is handling my state that means my app will be able to access my cart list as well as my total because currently i hold this total everywhere so that's how this thing is going to work now remember we are going to utilize react redux certain place for imports because certain hooks are utilized from react redux then we are going to utilize toolkit to have our entire setup related to configuration that's where this toolkit make our life easy so you will see this toolkit at many places i hope you got the idea so in simple words you are going to see terms like action that is going to hold your information about type and payload the payload is basically the product that you are going to work with or the information that you are passing right now so for example if you say add to cart here the payload for this is this particular product this sony and then you are going to see the term like reducer well we use reducer to manage our state and to return updated state what i mean by this if you see we have a reducer here we have some action that we need to perform it can be add or remove and at the end we return the updated state after performing all the action remember here we have access to the action remember this hold information about our previous state and action 
So we have access to this previous state and then we can uh, perform certain task on it and return the updated one. And we have action. So that means if it's add, we are going to perform that. If it's remove, we are going to perform that. And we also hold payload. That's how this action is going to be utilized. Now, once all of this is done, all of this task is done, we are going to share or export this through a cart reducer to our store. Now, if I get here, this is where this cart reducer is utilizing as a central storage path. Now this store, if you observe this, this store is later is shared to our entire application. That means our subscription is ready. So our entire app can utilize it. That's all. That's everything you should know about Redux. Now from the next lecture, we are going to perform everything in a practical way dive deep, write everything, define everything and understand how things are connected to each other. Remember, this lecture was just an overview. If you get the basics, it's great. Otherwise, we are going to understand things as we move forward from next one. So don't worry much about this. Make sure you understand the basics. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back, Shobham this side and now let us start our journey with Redux. What is this and why we need it? Well, the simple answer is it is a state management tool or I should say library that help us to manage all our state at one place so we can access them on any component on any page and perform certain tasks or I should say actions. If you already have information about what is context and reducer, then Redux will be a piece of cake for you. It's almost similar, but with certain advantages. One thing you need to remember that we need to install Redux separately. It's not pre-installed with React. So the first thing we need to understand is what we are going to do with Redux. Well, I'm going to take a common example. Here we have e-commerce application, or I should say a simple shopping cart. And what we want to do is when we do add to cart, there is a state which is going to hold these element, which is my cart list state. And I'm going to store these information. And there will be also a total state that is going to store the total amount. If I get here on my cart, you can see I'm displaying my total amount and both of these products that is basically stored in my cart list state. Now, if I remove them, we are performing action to remove them. So basically when I click on add, it's a action. When I get here, click on remove, it's an action. So add and remove is basically action for my whole program. So I hope you got the idea. We have state like cart list and total that we can access on all component and pages. And then we have certain action that we can perform something like add to cart or remove from cart. I know this is pretty simple to define, but as soon as we dive deep, things will get complicated. Uh, one thing I need to mention right now is make sure you install this extension, which is Redux dev tools. Uh, this is going to help us a lot for visualization. That's the basic idea. If you know context and reducer, this should be easy. It's almost similar. Now what we are going to do, well, we are going to start with a basic application, which doesn't have this functionality. This is not working. So we have this pre-designed UI that we did during an assignment. So this is ready. All we need to do is get from our GitHub repo. Uh, let me just download this in our folder. So I have this folder called shopmate-redux and I'm going to unzip everything here. Let me get it here. Take all the files and get inside my shopmate redux and then I'm going to delete both of them. Yep. So all my project files are here and as you can see, we don't have node module. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my command prompt here. And this is here. Let me close all of this, get my folder again, get my CMD again, 
and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say npm install so this is going to install all the packages and everything but before that let me just open my vs code yep so this is my vs code and let me do npm install Once that is done, we also need to install certain packages, which is basically our React Redux. And then we also need to install the toolkit. This is going to be the official website. If you just jump onto the tutorial, you will get entire information and guide. They recommend a website called redux.js.org. And here you can also get into the tutorial part and you will get a lot of information what is the prerequisite exact definition of everything that you require and certain example now it's a state management so you will see that we utilize use state but instead of that we can utilize redux we will define everything don't worry we are going to work with the, all of this the type and payload and all of this stuff so yep uh, i hope the installation part is done Okay, this is installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to focus on the Redux installation. My Redux is done and then my toolkit. Okay, all of this is done. Now I can either start my server here, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this. Yep, so I have a base structure here. Uh, so I should run this npm start so I can see how my base structure looks right now okay so this kit is of no use right now and this is the base structure that we are going to work with that means we need to create something like this where we have this functionality and I'm going to get here with my base structure and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply change the name so I'm just going to have a redux cart as my name that should be pretty simple get into my src get into my component header and here I just need to add redux cart okay get here yeah this is much better now before moving forward let me do the folder structure so everything is going to remain same but we are going to create a new folder and we are going to call it as store yep you heard it right that is going to be store now inside this there will be two files first one is going to be the slice and the second one is going to be the store now slice is going to be something that is going to store the initial stage something where we are going to define all our action that if we want to perform add if we want to perform remove everything will be defined in a slice and then there will be a store file where we need to register that so there will be multiple slice and there will be single store what i mean by this suppose you need to store information and actions related to your cart list then you are going to create a file which you are going to call as cart slice.js then maybe you are going to have another one which is going to store information related to your addresses or something like this or location so i'm going to create a new file i'm going to call this as location slice.js now this is going to hold all the information and all the experiment that we are going to do related to our card state similarly this is going to hold everything related to our location state and then there is going to be store.js that is going to be the main where our main configuration is going to work we are going to import all of the content here and then configure it here so there will be a configuration store that is going to take everything and that will be passed to all our component okay so let me close this let me close this let me get into my card slice and i'm going to remove this yep so that's the base structure i hope you got the idea now again one thing i need to clearly mention that we are not going to focus on jargons but first we are going to understand how to implement this 
the practical implementation everything through a practical flow we will understand entire flow we will understand how to use the required hooks once that is done we will then move towards jargons something similar i did during our context and reducer part so i have all the definitions ready if you want you can jump onto them but right now these are just going to feel like jargons like what is the slice a slice is a collection of redux reducer logic action for single feature in your app so this might sound easy to some this might sound pretty difficult to some we don't want to get into this we just want to understand how to use our redux and then later on understand each term as well so that's all for this one in the next one let us focus on the slice and store and create our state as well as actions related to our cart so we can have something like this add something like this remove as well as just if i have some add i can view them i can remove them with a total thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one hey there welcome back now let us start our task with slice so i have this cart slice and the first thing i need to do is i need to create a slice so basically i'm going to have const and i'm going to create a cart slice now this will be created using a function called create slice yep we need to access this from our redux js slash toolkit now if you observe this it's a function that accept our initial state an object of reducers and a slice name now what i mean by this is we need to provide name to this entire thing which we are going to call it as cart now later on we will visualize that why we are calling it cart because if i say perform addition we will have information that we are performing to cart otherwise it will be impossible to have information about this whole process so we give it a name if you have a location slice we are going to name it as location so it's easy to handle basically so we need to provide a name initial state of this whole process so for example with initial state i am going to have a cart list as empty list and then i am going to have total as zero then third thing if you remember here it is saying that you need a reducer now what is this reducer well reducer is going to have multiple methods now here with reducers we just need to pass on the methods that we want it can be addition uh, removal and then define what we are going to do with addition what we need to do we need to update our state add a product and when we are talking about remove we need to remove the product and you will have access to your state and other information so let's create it and then try to understand in depth so let me create this create slice and then uh, we need to pass the object that is going to have name let's say name as cart uh, let me open this up so it's easy to pass everything yeah so i'm going to have my name the second thing i'm going to have my initial state so let's say initial state and again the initial state it will be a object because we are going to hold two information that will be my cart list and that will be empty and the second thing is going to be my total that is going to be zero awesome that's done the third thing is going to be my reducers and this is going to be uh, object itself and then here i just need to pass all my add remove and everything else so for example i'm going to have add yep it's properly a function then i'm going to have a remove again this is going to be properly a function then if i have anything else i can do that now remember this currently have access to two things that is going to be my current state whatever the state that we are in that particular position so suppose i have zero item in cart then the state is going to have this the initial one whenever we load our application so this is the initial state but suppose we added one item then at that moment it is zero inside this add we will update the state to one with one item suppose then we add another one so the state is going to hold one and then inside that we will add another one the other one is going to have action so action basically holds two information a type and payload type is which 
action we need to perform and payload is going to be the information that we pass. Suppose we call add to a particular product. Suppose we call add here. So this is going to hold the information of that product. If I give you live representation here, get into my Redux here. Let me clear all of this. Don't look at the other things, but just visualize this when I click on add. So this is the action. This is the type, which is cart slash add. So cart is basically this add is basically this and payload is going to be the information that we are providing. When we click on this, we are providing the information for this product, which is ID one name, price and all of this. So this is going to have information inside our action. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Let's keep everything here. We will add all the logic later on. That's done. Now what else? Well, now we can access these individual information. What I mean by this. So I can have access to add and remove separately. I'm just destructuring it and I can have access them with the help of, I can just go card slice. Yep. This slice and I can go with actions. Yep. So this is going to return us an object, which is going to have information about our ad and remove. Yep. Now I can export them and I can use them anywhere. For example, if I need to use this information on my product card or my card card, I can use them. That is going to be done from here. And then we need to pass reducer from here to my store so I can register it. Yep. So I'm going to have export and from here, let's say const and I'm going to have cart reducer that I'm going to get from my cart slice dot reducer. Yep. So this is the reducer that we need to register or I should say configure inside our store. So that's the initial step. What we need to do first, we need to create a cart slice, pass the name for this particular slice, provide the initial state and reducer, which is going to be, uh, you can call this as a function, uh, that help us to inform that what are the type of process that we can perform on our state. Okay, great. Then we need to access all the method that we can perform. So, well, we need this add and remove that we can get from actions and we are exporting so we can use it anywhere. Uh, we also need to register all of this to our store so we can use card slice dot reducer store it and then we are going to register it. Now remember one thing usually what happen is uh, you don't have an object you basically store one thing for example you can store just an array and this is for your cart list this entire thing but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a object and then I'm going to access them individually. You will see me doing state dot cart list state dot total. Otherwise what you can do is you can remove this. You can have this just for thing, single thing like cart list. So whenever you say state, it will be this default. But right now we need to say state dot cart list to access this state dot total to access this. Okay, let me save this. Let me get onto my store. Now store is simple. We first need to import something like configure store. So you will have configure store from your toolkit. And then you also need to import the reducer, this one. So let me import my cart reducer that will be from my cart slice. Awesome. Now what I need to do, I just need to create a store. I'm going to say cons store now it is going to get a response now i'm going to store certain information basically i'm going to utilize this configure store uh, this method and this is going to return all the information about our state so we can access this later so what i'm going to do is i am going to just provide all the information within an object so i'm going to provide information about my reducer here and uh, we can supply multiple reducer, not just cart reducer, but multiple reducer. 
so i'm going to create a cart state here and i'm going to say cart reducer now if you have location you can create a location state here and provide its reducer you can have other state as well and you can provide all of them i'm just providing one so it's like a central storage point or central configuration point for all our slices now this is something that we need to provide to our entire app at this point of time we are just playing with these two file we haven't connected it with our app and which component can access it which component cannot we need to configure that so i'm going to export this store so i can access it anywhere you can directly use export here if you want let's say export and let me remove this now how our app is going to access this or how our app is going to know that we have something like this well that simple all we have to do is get into our index.js and cover our entire app with a provider yep you heard it right so you need to import a provider let's get here let's go with import and here you are going to have provider that will be from react redux now this provider is going to wrap everything your entire part where you might need this particular store yep we are going to pass that so let me create this provider here and let me take this let me pass it so this is going to work as a child for our provider and here i just need to pass information which is going to be my store and this will be store that we need to import let's say import store from yeah excuse me what we just did well what we did is we created this central configuration file that holds all our information now we have a provider which is going to cover our entire application and we are providing a value that can be stored everywhere now if you observe this this store currently holds our state that is our cart state uh, that currently have two information total as well as cart list total is going to be basically the number the final number of prices so if i add two product of 10 dollar then it will be 10 plus 10 20 dollar and cart is basically the two product that we are going to store uh, there all their information so store is basically that value and now our entire app can access that value yep you heard it right now every time i need to use that value i can use anywhere inside our app so if i open my app it can be accessed by a header as well as all the router if i get here it can be accessed by by home as well as cart so every part of my app now uh, can access the store information okay so that means can they access this add and remove well yes they can access this method as well so that's first stage where we configure our cart slice our store and our index now there are chances that you do have lot of doubt that why we are doing this why not well i will answer them as we move forward but here let me give you a demo let me refresh this one and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to click on add here so you can see so we perform something it's basically a method that we call which is add and we are inside our cart that means we are in this cart slice this name is cart and we perform the method add now here we provided the information which is type which was our add so that means it is going to get inside this one because the type is add and here the payload is this information so now i can access the payload here if i want so that means if i do console log uh, my action dot payload i am going to get the information of a product whenever i am going to click it but remember we haven't added this to our product yet we just now have access to this method and all of this state inside our component but we haven't used it yet we need to add this to our uh, let's say product card we need to add this on on click that we need to call this method and do that do that 
or do this. So we need to call that but I hope you got the idea that this is what happening behind the scene. Now if you talk about the state part, we call this as cart state, basically this one. If you get into the store, you have this cart state. Now basically this reducer is giving us access to this state. So if I open this right now, it is okay. I have added one element. Let me remove this. Yeah. So if you get into this state, so by default, the initial one currently holds cart list, which is empty and total, which is empty. So this is the basic one, the initial one, which we are storing here in cart state. Now, remember people usually call this as cart as well as this as cart. So it's fine, but currently since it's a tutorial, I am going to mention this as cart state. So it's easy for you to remember that here is the state and here is the name of this particular slice part. Okay. So if I get back here, let me add a product again. So if I, okay, let me get into the state part. So if I get into the state here, now I have added the product. So the, my state is updated with cart list now have one item and my total is also updated. So that's how this state is going to work. Now, if I show you in the form of chart, this is how it look. Uh, currently we have a state inside this. We have cart state. Now cart state have two object, my cart list, and then, uh, it's object one. If I add another one, if I get here to this step, now you can see there are two item. And if I show you, that this is the state that we are working with. If I create another one, let's say location state, it will be here on the new child. State dot card state is going to give us access to this. Then dot cart list will give us access to this. I hope you got the idea. Now, what if we don't want this total? We can do one more stuff. We can remove this. We can just have this empty state. Yep. So now this is going to work like an empty state and we can treat it as our entire just product saving cart list. I hope you got the idea. Now let me refresh this once again. Yeah, so this is empty right now. Uh, let me squeeze this. Let me add an item. Get here, select this one. Get into tree. Remove this item. Get here and select my action here. You can see type is cart and remove. I know I stretched this lecture too much, but I hope you got the idea how the entire process is working. The other aim is how to use this state and how to utilize these add and remove method that we'll be discussing in the next one. Thank you for following and I see you guys in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now our entire app currently have access to this store. That means all my state as well as action. Let's do some fun stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is how about accessing uh, this add method and calling it to add an item. Well, let's try that. Let me get into a product card, basically this part and let's try to add add to cart method. So here I need access to my add. Well, let's do that. Let me get here. Let me get import and I'm going to have my add comma remove. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have from and all I have to do is just go with my store slash my card slice. Yep. So I have access to this add. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call it. So let me get here uh, on click. Basically, I'm going to create a function and I'm going to call this add and I'm going to pass a payload. What is this payload? Well, basically the product that we need to add in our cart. Let me pass this product. Let me save, get here, try to get here. Let, let's see if I get an error. If I click on add. Well, I don't know if it's added or not. Let me get into my Redux. If I click on add, nothing is working or I don't see anything. Why? Well, for that, we need to utilize a hook, which is called as use dispatch. Let's do that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get here, get uh, my import ready. And here I'm going to have use dispatch from my react redux. 
and here i'm going to access it uh, let's say const that will be my dispatch and here i'm just going to call this use dispatch so it is going to return a dispatch function that can help us to call all these method let's say dispatch let's take this now whenever i need to call anything i need to cover it with dispatch if i save this one get back here refresh now if i click on add to cart you can see i am able to add to cart uh, this is add and here payload is this but my state should be empty right now why because inside this add to cart we did nothing but we added a console so let's see my console i have this this is the payload that we are getting so that means when i pass this product inside my add it get here inside my action inside payload so if i do action dot payload i get access to that product okay this is great one thing i need to understand is to call any type of method i need to utilize a dispatch and to use this dispatch i need to first call a hook that give me access to this method i hope you got the idea you can call this anything else but it's common to call it as dispatch awesome now we can add it but the problem is once my product is added i need to remove it but before that i need a cart list i need to perform something here something actual uh, right now i'm just calling this and if i get here inside my redux my state is not updated if i refresh i get into action everything is empty let me add and here i perform this now i know that the i have performed this i perform add and this is the information that i passed inside my payload but if i get into my state my state is still empty so what i am going to do inside this i am going to add some method so what i need to do is i just need to update my cart list first later on we will talk about total but i need to update my cart list so let's say i have a const and i have updated uh, let me give it a short name only or uh, let me increase the screen size let me call this as updated cart list and i'm going to access my current state dot my current cart list dot i'm going to concatenate it that means with my current list i am going to add a new item and i'm going to say action dot payload because that's where i have access to my product now i'm going to return the updated state so all the previous item is going to remain as it is but i'm going to update my cart list that is this one there can be more items so i'm going to keep them as it is but i'm going to update my cart list with the new updated cart list yep that's it let me return so now if i get here let me refresh if i click on add to cart add to cart if you see my state and open this i have this element uh, let me get into my state uh, after the second step i have this two element let me add another one and click here to my third and i have the third element and you can see the third element is id3 jbl tune 179 so that's how we are going to update currently i am not updating my total let me do that all i have to do is since i need to update my total every time i add and remove item i can do that here as well i am going to say const i am going to have a total item and what i can do is i can access the current total which is my state dot total and whenever i am going to add any product it will be an addition what will be the addition i am accessing the product right now so let's say i have action dot payload dot price yep so suppose my current value is zero and my new product value is 149 so it will be 0 plus 149 so i am going to have a total so i am going to uh, update this total inside my return and i am going to pass this total and add a comma let me save get back here refresh everything is let me get into my state basically if i click on add go to step one inside my cart state my total is 149 and i have one item if i add another one 
go to step 2 I have 198 because 149 plus 49 so that means my ad is now working so that's how we are going to perform it so this is the method by which we can perform add but how about I need to access something access my cart list or access my total here or inside my cart page suppose I have this page is my cart page how I am going to have my cart list and instead of these fake products I want my cart list here well we are going to utilize a hook and all I have to call a use selector yep you heard it right we are going to have a hook for that to access all our information let's say use selector that is going to be from react redux and I need to call it here I am going to store all my information inside my products I am going to remove this now so whatever the return I am going to get I am going to get inside my products yep so I am going to have this use selector and inside this I need to pass what information I need to select so I need to pass a function basically so uh, I am going to have access to my state and then I need to return what I need to select so I am going to have my state inside this we need to select which state well we have our card state remember we need to select which state we are going to work with because there can be a location state there can be other state as well remember this this is what we need to select and then inside this we are going to have both the element which is going to be our cart list and total we can define which one we need if we just do this this is going to hold information for both but I need just one which is my cart list let me save and this is going to store all the element from my cart list and then we are doing a map now if I get back to my home page yep if I add two or three item go to my redux uh, go to third process get into my state I have these three item and total is 377 go to my cart here you can see I have these three item awesome one thing I can do right now I can also access the total so I can get here I have access to total I can say cart state then inside that total and one thing I can do right now I can have a slash and then say total I also need to add a currency I can do dollar let me save get back here you can see 377 if I refresh at zero get here add to card go total is 149 that is this product so that's how we are going to access information remember whenever we need to call a method we use use dispatch get access to this dispatch and cover the entire method whenever we need to access some information then we utilize use selector now this use selector expect a function that what we need to return so we have access to this state we go to state select the state uh, currently we have card state we can have location state or any other and then we specifically return what state we are dealing with we access the card state and then total okay this is great now what if I need to have a remove option inside my card card yep I need to have option to remove for example if I jump here I need if I click this button I need to call remove and then do something let's perform our dispatch function again so I'm going to first import my remove function basically that will be from my store slash my card slice okay another thing I need to import is my hook for my dispatch so it will be use dispatch that will be from react redux the first thing I need to do is I need to access the dispatch so let's say dispatch which will be use dispatch awesome now if I need to call remove here I can just have on click I can have a function which is going to have remove I need to pass the product information which we are removing that will work as payload 
so i have access to this product information and i have this dispatch that i need to cover it with so basically we are dispatching the remove function we are just saying okay just execute this okay this is done now inside my dispatch i'm basically doing nothing to be honest i'm just doing a console log let's say console dot log and here let's say i need to access the state and action to my dispatch as well uh, just let's say just action if i get here uh, refresh go to home click on add to cart go to my cart get into my console if i click here you can see the type is cart slash remove and then the payload is the information of that item so that's how we are going to perform but uh, let me quickly update the remove as well what we need to do is we need to have a updated cart list that should be the yep and i'm going to access my state inside this i'm going to access my cart list inside this i'm going to apply a filter method and here i'm going to access the item the item from my cart list okay and i am going to perform something i'm going to check if this id is equals to equals to the action dot payload dot id what i mean by this is here we are accessing our product right when we click on this we are passing the product which we are accessing here so if i say remove the product one i have access to this product one dot id that is the id of that product and I'm matching it with my current selected ID from my cart list. So I'm checking if I have, suppose I, in my cart list, I have five item. I'm selecting the first one, checking if this ID is equals to this. If this is equal, then we are going to keep it. Nope, we need to remove it basically. So all the IDs that are not equal, we are going to keep them. ID which match, we need to remove. Why? We are removing something, right? So suppose I have five item. And if I say remove the ID four, so if I find the ID four, I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to keep the remaining one. ID four should be left out and the remaining one, which are not equal. I'm going to keep them inside my cart. Okay. And I also need to update the total. So I'm going to just copy this. And since we are removing this, that means I'm going to remove the price of the item that I just removed. So I'm going to access the current total and then I'm going to remove the price of my current item that I just passed. Now something similar will be executed here. I just need to return the updated total and updated cart list. Awesome. Let me save, get back here, get here, refresh. If I click on add, add, if I get into my cart, if I perform remove, remove. Okay. This is working fine yeah so that's how we are going to work with our add and remove take a pause try to understand the entire logic what we did and there are chances that you might get confused with this but take a pause and try to visualize this so that's all for this lecture now in the next one we are going to update small thing for example when i click on this add this remove button should appear so i can have option to remove stuff I also need to update this number, which is currently hard coded. So there are few things that we need to update and that we are going to do in the next one. Hey there, welcome back. Now let us try to access this information on our header as well and try to work on the remove button. Let me get here, get inside my header. Now what we need to do, well, we need to access cart list so we can find its length. Let me get onto the top import. Well, to access, we need selector. So I'm going to use use selector. Yep, that will be from React Redux. And next thing I'm going to do, well, I am going to access them. I'm going to have const, I'm going to say products. Inside this, I'm going to store everything. So I'm going to utilize my use selector. Am I going to get everything directly? Nope, I need to specify, I need to return what I need. So I'm going to have a function and I have access to state directly. So let's say state dot with state. Well, it will be our 
cart state. Then I need to mention which one inside my cart state, either cart list or total. Well, it's cart list. Now I have access to all the information inside my product. I can get here, utilize this product and say dot well length. If I save, get back here, it's zero. If I add, it's one. If I add, it's two. Get here, remove, remove. Okay, this is working fine. Now let's close this one. Get into my product card and here let's add a condition. What condition? Well, since I add this product, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my product list or I should say my cart list and see if this product is already there. If yes, then I'm going to show a button called remove. If no, then I'm going to show the button uh, add. Well, how we are going to do this? Before doing any of this, I need to access my list, which is my cart list. So again, I'm going to utilize my selector, perform something similar. What I mean? Well, I'm going to have my const. I'm going to store everything inside my products and I'm going to utilize my use selector. So I'm going to get automatically. Nope. If you remember, it's a hook that access Redux store state. This hook takes a selector function as an argument. Does this selector is going to work automatically? Well, nope. If you want to read about this, it's here, but nope, it's not going to work automatically. We have access to state about our Redux state. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to return something. I have access to the state. Which state? Well, my card state. And then I am going to access my cart list inside this. So now I have access to this products. I am going to check if this product is already there in my list or not. I have access to my cart list. Let me call this as cart list only. So it's easy now here inside this. So I have access to my cart list. I can do something similar here as well. Call this as cart list. Call this as cart list. On my cart.js, I can do something similar on my header also. It's better name to read cart list and my cart list. Yep. Get into my cart page and update this as well. Cart list, cart list. Yep. Okay, 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 okay. Let me get back. So I have access to my cart list. I have access to my current product. Inside this card, I just have one product, right? So I'm going to check if this product is inside my cart list or not every time I load. So I am going to utilize use effect, but I'm going to check if this is inside my cart list or not. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a use effect. Use effect. Yep. So it will be updated every time. And there will be certain dependencies that we are going to add in a while. But what we are going to do is we are going to check if our product is in cart or not and I'm going to store that in a variable. Let's say product in cart. It will be a true or false. So I'm going to access my cart list. I am going to say find and then I, inside this cart list I'm going to access the item and I'm going to check if this item dot id is equals to the product that we have. So I'm going to access the ID here. I'm going to check if it's equals to this ID. So basically I'm checking ID of this product and ID inside each individual element inside my cart list. If this is true, that means my product is in cart list. I'm going to return a true. I'm going to store this here. Awesome. And then what should I do? Well, I should just say it's there. I should have access to this here. If it's true, then I should show remove button. Otherwise, I should show add to cart. But how to handle this information? Well, we since we are inside a component, we can use use state. So what I'm going to do, I am going to have a const. It is going to say is cart or I should say is in cart set is in cart and I am going to utilize use state by default this product is not inside my cart so by default it is false but here I am going to have a condition 
that if this variable is true then just set this to true else I can just say set this to false awesome now here if you see inside this and so this use effect we have uh, ID so that is going to be one of our uh, dependency we have also access the cart so that will be one of our dependency let's say cart and ID awesome so every time this cart is updated we are going to call this again so what I mean by this so if I click on add okay I need to import use state first get here yeah that's done so if I get here now if I click on add to cart basically behind the scene we updated this again and now our set in cart is true because our item is now inside our cart now I can add a condition here simple condition about buttons I can have if is in cart is true that means my product is there then I should have a remove button otherwise I should have a add button well you heard it right so if this is true then remove yep remove otherwise I have add button so let me add a remove button as well on click dispatch it should remove that product I have remove well I have remove fortunately so let me also replace this and have remove let me add a class to this button because it's remove let me say remove and I also need to add the CSS for this so get into my product card dot CSS scroll down to the bottom and here let me add it don't worry I will format it later so let me get here get here let me save get back here now you can see this item is in cart so I have option to remove let me get into my redux and my state currently holds and my state currently have messed up because it's from it's older so let me refresh this click now let me test this out let me get here and this is our current state and if I click on add now you can see I have the option to remove if I click on to the first step I have this cart with a total get here I have this item that I can remove I have option about the details the length and the total get here add add remove remove and everything is working fine so that's how we are going to deal with the whole process of addition and removal now this is something extra that we did what we did is we access our cart list we then created a component level state and here we are trying to check if this item the item that we currently hold is inside our cart or not so yeah we are trying to match the individual item id and our id our product id if this is there i am going to have a true if this is true then we are going to set our state to true otherwise it will be false if our state is true then i should have a remove button if my state is false then i should have a add button that's it now let me save everything is saved and our app is working fine now this extension is important because this give us lot of flexibility just to visualize stuff so suppose let me refresh if I add multiple things you can just scroll down select the last step and here you can get into the chart you will see how this is working how all of them are here now if I remove anyone get here you will see this item is gone if I remove this one uh, get here you can see how this is gone so I also have access to this total information so that's how things are working behind the scene that's done now in the next one what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly discuss about these terms I know how to define or I can now say that I can write this everything this create slice name initial state reducer everything on my own but now let's focus on the terms 
because we have three major things this is where we have our slice this is where we have our configuration and this is where we are trying to use everything so we are accessing our cart list we are also accessing this dispatch and everything so in the next one let us discuss about this term and also deploy it on maybe netlify or versal thank you for following and i see you guys in the next one Hey there, welcome back. Now let us quickly deploy our project on Netlify or Versal. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to stop my server. So let me stop that. The next thing I'm going to focus on is open my CMD or terminal inside our shopmate-redux, the folder in which I was working. Now all I have to do is I have to initialize my GitHub. Let's say git init. And we have initialized our git inside this shopmate redux folder. Remember one point we also need to create a repository on github. So let's call it as shopmate dash redux. Awesome. And remember we are utilizing toolkit redux toolkit for everything. Uh, here let's create this repository. Also let me do all the step that was required. Uh, that means git init, add, commit, branch, remote and push. Now let's work with git add and other step. Let's say git add. Once that is done, I have to commit. Let's say git commit. And then I need to provide a message. I will say integrated redux to shopmate. That is done. The next step is to just select my branch, add remote and then push. So let me select my branch, git branch dash m it is going to be main once that is done i need to select the remote origin since this is unique for each repository let me do that and now i can push to my main looks good let me get here and i have all my files get inside this you can see i have my store Okay, once that is done, all I have to do is get into my Netlify, click on add new site, import an existing project, click on GitHub and authorization will be done. And then I just need to pass my shopmate Redux. Let me pass this repo. And here I have it, just click on it. And uh, I'm going to select my main branch. Let me deploy the site. That's it. Now remember one thing I usually recommend is have a new updated title uh, for your page. For example, currently we have home and something like this. I recommend updating it inside your get into pages, uh, home as well as cart. So you can just change it or we did update it this part. So it's easy uh, differentiable with our previous projects. Okay, let me get here to my Netlify. Let me refresh. Okay, this is done. And if I open this one, get here, click on add to cart, get into my cart, remove. Also for once, let me check to my console and see if there is any uh, console log. Yep, everything is fine. Let me get into my domain and update it and call it as shopmate redux uh, maybe dash ul okay let's say shopmate dash redux for now or i can call it as redux dash ul um, it's just on you that what domain name you want looks good to me and things are working fine so now this is done let me close all of this now let's talk about all of these term so my recommendation is to get onto redux toolkit page or redux page remember these two are different so what happened initially is the state management with the react with Vue, with angular was a problem if you remember the example of prop drilling we had so many component one after another after another in a tree it's impossible to manage all these prop and it was impossible to share props between sibling 
so redux came into picture now there were certain issues with redux then came with toolkit it's basically a way to write redux logic for example if you observe there are certain places where we imported stuff from redux toolkit and there are certain places where we just imported stuff from react redux well what is this and also if you open your index.js right now here you can access information that we included provider from react redux so basically this all of this common stuff like uh, this provider and this use selector also this uh, use dispatch everything was from redux the thing that we do with slice and the store came from toolkit so when we utilize this create slice things are easy now we can work directly with state we can update the state directly and lot of other stuff earlier it was pretty different so this toolkit give us a pattern how to write all of this how to export this how to configure this at one place and later on to use this information we have the redux so we have use selector use dispatch then we have this provider and inside this provider we just need to provide the store now all of this is through toolkit everything we did here was from redux now if you get here you will get lot of information that uh, what a use selector is well it's basically a hook to read data in react component okay this is easy then what is use dispatch well hook to dispatch an action in react component now what action it can be add it can be remove whatever the action that we have defined then we have a provider that we use to cover our entire app so that all component can talk to the store what store well the store that we provided so it is going to hold our state so all of this come from main redux now if you get here into your toolkit part you will get to see other things you will get to see information about your configuration so you will see that you have configure store you have a store that you create inside this you have reducer then you will see information about slice that it require a initial state value reducer function to define how the state can be updated and the name so if you get here this is the name the initial state here uh, they have this initial state with value 0 and then the reducers now this is the best definition to define reducer function that how the state can be updated so increment decrement increment by amount if they are working with a counter and then they need to store somewhere so they have this store created this state and this counter reducer so this is a good read i strongly recommend to jump here uh, on the quick start for toolkit read about this and on redux you should read about the redux fundamental uh, the ui and react so these two are pretty important that will give you an idea the next thing if you want to also explore things then i recommend the blog from open replay uh, it's a good blog that define that how redux flows so if you see now you can visualize this because you have idea so we have a store we have reducer inside this we have multiple reducer function that help us to update a state and then we also give access to the state how if you remember 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 get here this is the part that we are trying to export and we are storing it here so yep now we have this state we can access this state inside our component through use selector and we can also call actions well how remember use dispatch so we utilize dispatcher and all of these action will be inside our reducer what i mean by this well if i need to call add i need to utilize a dispatcher if i need to call remove i need to utilize the dispatch thing so that's how this whole circles move so you will get a lot of information in this particular blog so i hope you got the idea what slice is now what uh, redux is what action is what play payload is what is type use selector dispatch provider and store that's all i hope you got the idea main thing is you understand the practical point right 
Main thing is you understood the practical point, right? So that's all. And I see you guys in the next one.